The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. My partner, Malik Hill. And now we're in it. Football season has started. College football started with week zero last week. Um, we had some games here and there. And then this week, big week one. So we're going to get into that. Uh, I'm going to mention Hard Knocks episode four real quick. And we have a little NBA news. And then, because I'm not going to be here next week, we have to do NFL picks because week one of the NFL season is next week, which is crazy. So, let's get right into it. Um, the little NBA news tidbit that happened was Patrick Beverly was traded for the Lakers, or to the Lakers, uh, for Taylor Horton Tucker and our boy Stanley Johnson. The fact that you actually said our boy Stanley Johnson is it, hilarious. Well, you know. I don't think you've ever said a positive thing about him on this podcast. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so... Taylor Horton Tucker, the untouchable Laker, finally got traded for Patrick yeah. Beverly. How did LeBron let this happen? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Taylor Horton Tucker was the just gemstone that the Lakers had that was involved in almost every trade, and now he gets traded for Patrick Beverly, which I think is a meh move. It's the Lakers, like, desperate. I think on paper it helps. And I... To me, a desperate move would be like trying to go for like Donovan Mitchell. Maybe. But at and, least I feel like that's trying harder. Like Patrick Beverly, what does he do for your team well, except uh, for cause more controversy yeah. in LA? Every somewhat a reasonable Lakers fan is hoping that the Indiana trade happens so they can get Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. I think that's possible. You just put two things together that don't make sense reasonable and Lakers fan. There are a few. <laughs> I, I see them on Twitter. When, when Darvin Ham said he was going to put together lineups with Russ and Pat Bev, there were quite a few Lakers fans that weren't happy. Mm -hmm. So there are some some reasonable ones. Because that sounds like a I, – uh, I, don't, I don't know the like biggest negative way to describe it. <laughs> there could be some some positives. I mean, maybe. Maybe. They're, they're real fiery. They, they're, they'll scream at a lot of people, get in people's faces. Well – the latest news is that LeBron wants to play with both of his sons now, so he's going to be playing till he's forty three. So, listen, if he wants to stay as a Laker, that'll be real. It seems like it's, it's it could be possible that he could be the Tom Brady of basketball because his 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 gifts just won't go away. Yeah, he's a one of a kind where it's, there's there's a slight version of drop off that only is like with him. Mm -hmm. Like he's losing his athleticism by like point one. <laughs> He still like his head at the rim athleticism. Yeah. So it's he's he's gonna play past forty, if there's no injury. Yeah, I can believe it. Both sons, I don't see it. Anyway, kind of a minor NBA trade, but it's some news. So NBA season is getting closer. We're just uh, what a month away ish. I think the first preseason game is September thirtieth. Yeah. So it's like I think it said like Warriors Clippers in Japan, I believe. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah, like a month away. Um, and then Hard Knocks episode four aired last night. Malik did not see it. He's not a fan. <laughs> um, no, he just forgot. I'm a supporter from the sidelines. Anyway, there wasn't too much craziness in this episode. It was a good episode. They did focus a little bit more on Jared Goff. Still like to see even more, honestly. But you got a little more personality out of him. Uh, he cursed on TV, which you know, it, it threw me off because I always just think he's a quiet guy. But. It was kind of funny in the moment. Um, showed some of his outside projects um, outside of football. And then, of course, you go back to, you know, your normal guys, Craig Reynolds, uh, Rodrigo, all those guys were highlighted. Um, and then they went into the Pittsburgh preseason game, which was a disaster, and it wasn't that great. Um, 
so they didn't show many highlights from it. It was ba- it was all about Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett. That's all it was about. Yeah, and even then, on Lions Hard Knocks, even though then, I didn't watch it. But. And and they're leading up to the Lions roster moves, the cuts, and all that for next week. But because we're in real life, we already know the Lions roster moves. And so, I'll, like I said, Hard Knocks episode four wasn't crazy, but it was still good. Um, gave us a little more perspective. So. Let's talk about some of those roster moves that the Lions made. So, on it was yesterday at 4 p.m., uh, the 53-man roster was finalized. And a lot of our Hard Knocks players, well, it was about 50% of the guys that they focused on made it. 50% didn't, for the most part. Um, obviously, Malcolm Rodriguez made it. Aiden Hutchinson, he's already in all that. Um David Blau did make the initial 53-man roster yesterday, but as of this morning, he was cut. Um, So David Blau was cut. The Lions ended up signing Nate Sudfield, who's kind of a veteran backup at this point. So they have no third stringer? No. They have two quarterbacks on the roster at the moment. So do, you they think, might, do you think they should have kept one, or do you, are you just fine with them going with two? No, I'm, I'm fine with two. I would assume... And I've heard some people say that they might end up with one on their practice squad at some point. So that could Bring be... Bring back Jake Rudock. Jeff Driscoll's out there. He's out there? Yeah. I thought the Texans would keep him. Nope. Hmm. They dropped him. Who are they? Who's their backup? I don't even know. I don't remember. I, I swear every Texans preseason highlights I watch. I'm going to have to look. Yeah. Keep going. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, David Blau didn't make it. And obviously, after the Pittsburgh game, Tim Boyle was also cut. So, both of the backup quarterbacks for the Lions got dropped. They did sign a new one, like I said. Nate Sudfeld played for the Eagles for a little while, also played for the 49ers. Um, He's a decent backup quarterback. It's whatever. Um, But I feel a little better with him than Blau and Boyle, to be honest. Um, And then uh, our guy, our offensive lineman, Easy, he got cut, didn't make it. That was kind of uh, assumed. There's a lot of good linemen on this team, a lot of them that had to play last year, so they already had a lot of experience. Uh, so it's harder to get the newer guys in there. A lot of athleticism, but he he was almost too raw. And he gave up yeah. too many sacks, especially in the Pittsburgh game. Uh, and they highlighted that on that episode of Hard Knocks last night. Um, so, yeah. And then the other one that I'm a little disappointed in is Khalil Pimpleton. Got cut. He did not oh make God. the final roster. And I know it's definitely because in game he struggled. He had some nice catches here and there, but there was a lot of end zone drops that he made. He he had a lot of chances to make big plays, just couldn't come up with them. I still wish they would have tried him more at special teams. That's kind of the that's odd his specialty. Bit. That's his that was returning kind of, is his main thing. That was kind of my confusing part is where they didn't use him for that or try him out for that, or at least that they showed. I guess. Um, so that's a little uh, disheartening, just a little bit, because in my mind, he's very similar to Khalif Raymond. He's just a lot younger, so there's more potential there. I know the Lions seem to like Khalif, but I almost would have rather had the younger guy, in my opinion. But that's besides the point. Devin he, Funches made the roster, I assume. No. He didn't? Devin Funches was also cut. That's confusing to me. When he was in, he, they targeted him and he caught it and yeah. he made plays. Yeah. Why would they not keep him on the road? They that's, got that's a lot, of, quite a few tight ends. Uh, they kept, uh, what's his name? Zilstra, um, obviously Hawkinson. Hawkinson, I, I guarantee any name you say after Hawkinson. I think there's like. I'm going to say I'd, I think I'd rather have. I think, uh, what's his name? Drees, I believe, made it. Um, Yeah. So maybe those guys were just better blockers, and that's what they were looking for. I assume. Yeah. But he he made plays when they put him in there. I I don't know. I'm also a little confused on the on ESPN. They're showing that the Lions kept Trinity Benson, which I saw otherwise that they had cut him, which I would be a fan of. I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't even know who that is. It's the guy that they traded for last year for like a 
some Trinity Benson sixth or seventh round pick or something. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like a created like player you drafted Madden or something. Trinity Benson. No. So what position was he? I'm really confused. He's a wide receiver. That. He's like kind of Oh, a, that Benson. Yeah. I didn't know his first name. <laughs> he's a he's a speedy wide receiver okay. kind of guy. Um I saw that he was cut. This is showing me otherwise, so I don't know for sure. Um that was kind of the notable ones I thought of. Oh, and Jared Davis didn't make it. Yeah. Rodrigo was too much. Yeah. It, and that's which, sad for a guy that was, what was this, his third year? Um, Second or third? I can't remember like which that. one. Yeah. Yeah. So the Lions uh, linebacking core is Alex Anzalone, Derek Barnes, Chris Board, Austin Bryant, Charles Harris, Julian Aquara, Romeo Aquara, Malcolm Rodriguez, and Josh Woods. Still not that great, but. No, but it's. Uh, some potential in areas. Yeah. Um, and then one other maybe notable one, uh, Austin Seibert won the kicking job over Riley Patterson, hmm. which I think think is interesting. Um, I liked Riley Patterson when he came in last year, but um, I think they like the Seibert having a little bit bigger of a leg. Seibert has been around for a while, so I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Th- those are the notable cuts. Uh, nothing crazy surprising, but like I said, some of the hard knocks uh, guys that were highlighted did not make the roster. Maybe they make it back onto the practice squad at some point. Um, I'm assu- I, w- I would assume uh, like a guy like uh, Khalil Pimbleton will make it to a different roster and at least given a chance and maybe a team where they want to use him for special teams or something like that. All right, anyway, college football week one. Here we go. We got Michigan. We got Michigan State. Um, obviously not in the biggest of games. Yeah. Michigan State playing Western uh, Friday night. Uh, so that would be cool. That's going to be, I think it's on ABC. So primetime kind of game. Should be fun because, like we said, uh, Western's one to always at least be in the game and scare some teams here and there. They're playing on ESPN. ESPN, yeah. yep. So, yeah, Michigan State should be able to take care of business, but I like that we'll be able to see them under the lights Friday night. And I can actually watch that before I go on my cruise. So that will be nice. And then, so I really don't think there's a lot to talk about there. And then Michigan playing Colorado State, no big yeah. deal. Outside of the QB battle, everybody's I was gonna talking say, about it. Yeah. The one thing that I'm going to bring up. Kate McNamara is going to play well. The one, the one thing that I'm going to bring up, because i got to ask you, Michigan has decided they're going to play Cade McNamara for Colorado State, and they're going to play J.J. McCarthy for uh, Ohio, Hawaii. Yes. Jeez. Um, how do you feel about that, Malik? You like it? You I, not like it? I didn't predict this exact system, but I said during the Michigan preview, the battle was going to go into the season, at least until week three or four. And that's exactly what it looks like. Now, all the extra weird stuff Jim Harbaugh added about this being a biblical battle. and Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, listen, I if you're a Michigan fan, this should just you should just brush this off at this point. Because Jim being weird, this is just what he does. I don't mm-hmm. care as long as he coaches well. But this is a really weird situation. And I don't think either game is really going to determine who's better against Colorado State. I don't why, honestly. I don't I mean, Colorado State might probably has a slight of uh, uh, not not even slightly. Hawaii was terrible against Vanderbilt last week, so Colorado State is a, a better overall team most likely. But still, like those those two games won't tell you a bunch. Maybe whoever makes the less mistakes, but we already know Cade McNamara is the guy that tries to doesn't take as many chances, and JJ McCarthy right. is the guy that's gonna get yeah, make more plays. So, and I think that's my biggest problem with it. What is this going to prove? Nothing. What What are you going to see it's out of this? It's not going to prove anything. Like, J.J. could go out there, score like five touchdowns against Hawaii, but does it really mean anything? It's just going to prove that he's talented like we always, like we already know. Like, what if – That he's extremely talented. Like, Cade plays against Colorado State, has three touchdowns, 300 yards, zero interceptions, which I don't even know if that's going to happen because I think Michigan can just run all over him. And then we go to Hawaii – and J.J. just lights up the scoreboard, like I said, gets like five touchdowns or something, has a bunch of rushing yards, has a bunch of passing yards. 
Does that mean he's better than Cade? That's what I, I don't, I don't, we don't know if they're going to run two completely different schemes. We don't know what they're going to do. And this, it almost seems like this is a setup <laughs> for for JJ to come into the Hawaii game, for them to set it up for him to ball out and be like, oh, look at look at this guy. He has the higher ceiling. Now we can name him the starter. And to go through all that just to name a starter is is just not necessary. Yeah. Not I, at all. I don't know. I don't know where they're leaning. I don't know what they're trying to do. I just feel like it muddies the water even more, and I don't like it. But it, whatever. We'll see what it's happens. Jim. We'll see if they can do I, it. I can't get frustrated by it at this point because this is just who he is. Because, let's see. Who who they play in week three? UConn. UConn, yes. Okay, so <laughs> that's a big difference. It doesn't mean much. Oh, either. man, UConn, let's play somebody. And then Maryland. The game against Maryland is the first slightly competitive one. Yeah. And that's more like Michigan's defense being battle-tested. I, I'm not afraid of Maryland's defense, honestly. With either quarterback. No. Oh, whatever. That's why I, Iowa will be the game where there is one quarterback playing. Yeah. Hopefully. We'll have to wait and see Michigan. Uh, it, it's interesting, to say the least. I am just – I'm – so I'm optimistic that there are two quality options because there have been many years where I've watched Michigan football and after the first guy goes down, it's a what do we do? Yeah. And we have two guys that we can win nine, ten games with. Mm-hmm. Maybe more with JJ. So, yeah, just, just try to be optimistic about it. All right, let's get into some of the bigger games. But first, I want to backtrack. We got to talk about Ireland. <laughs> Oh, man. What a what a what a first week. What a first week. Northwestern Nebraska was something else. It definitely was. Now this was the night of my wedding, so I had to watch it later. Uh but I was getting updates and so when I went home that day and I got the updates and heard all the the inklings of what happened, I just laughed. Northwestern knocked off Nebraska, 31-28. And oh boy, Scott Frost starting off strong. 0-1. I, I don't know. Listen, I don't know I, what to I'm think. going to try and give Nebraska fans some hope, even though there it looks like there's none right now. That first drive was awesome. That first drive was awesome. There were barely any flaws. Casey Thompson was on. That touchdown catch by Isaiah Garcia Castaneda was awesome. Anthony Grant broke off that nice run later in the game, that, like, 35, 40-yard run. The run game wasn't consistent at all, and the offensive line was a mess. Mm-hmm. But at least you showed you could have some explosion in the run game. The pass game fell off in the second half, but at least it's shown that there, as the offense plays more games, there should be more consistency, and there could be more big play potential as the season goes on. Mm-hmm. Now, the defense... <laughs> I mean, you just got to tackle in the open field. <laughs> um, I guess it's just that simple. Yeah. Like, you played against – you under you underestimated Northwestern. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't have underestimated Evan Hull, who's a tank of a back, and broke so many tackles. Yeah. But their backup, Cam Porter, is also very talented. They both are could rush for, like, well over 700, 800 yards this season because they're both quality Big Ten backs. But it really might just be th- that simple. Just you you got to figure out how to tackle in the open field. Mm-hmm. And it is a problem that something that simple is is still a problem in year five of Scott Frost. And the fact that both lines of scrimmage on defense and offense were just taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. Like, Pat, that looked like a, a classic Pat Fitzgerald Northwestern team. We're going to make you lose. Yeah, You're going to make the mistakes – and we're going to play the way we play. And at the end of the game, we're going to win. And um, that off, that onside kick call. <laughs> uh, yep. It'll be haunting listen, the rest of the season. I've I've heard some people say they, they're not mad at it because it shows Scott Frost. Like, he wanted to let his team know, like, it's time to win right now. Mm-hmm. But that also shows that you don't have confidence in your defense. Yeah. And you, uh, I don't know if we could keep this going. Let's onside kick it and just try to end this now. Right. That's a panic call. That's that's not a confidence call. Mm-hmm. It it just it's not a good look, and it's just more 
red marks on the Scott Frost era of Nebraska. They can still win six or seven games. It's still possible. But, boy, you got to pull off some big surprising wins to do it. And that's you got the I'm talent. Saying. The offense could be explosive and get better. But, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough start. Shouts out to Northwestern, man. Ryan Holinsky, he had an excellent game. People wrote him off. Wrote him off. Mm-hmm. Really, really good game for Nebraska. I mean, for Northwestern. So, fun start to the Big Ten season. Yeah. Um, Illinois got a win against Wyoming, too. And Wyoming is awful. Yeah. Awful. So, that leads us to week one this weekend. What would you say? You, you have to say Notre Dame, Ohio State's the big one, right? Don't you that, think that 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 really is seen as the big one? I honestly, I, I'm. I mean, I know there's a couple others, but yeah, I, I I'm paying more attention to the Oregon Georgia game, but Notre Dame Ohio State it's the two versus five game. Even though I don't understand why Notre Dame is ranked fifth, but it's a preseason poll. It is Notre it is. Dame. Yeah, but what are your thoughts on this one? I wanna I wanna get your thoughts. You know, it's one of the few times that I just hope Ohio State beats the brakes off of Notre Dame. Listen, I I am surprised. Are you still a a Notre Dame hater? Yeah. It seems like most people have turned kind of positively to them just because of Marcus Freeman. I'm not like a hater necessarily. I just I've hated them forever. I don't like the idea of Notre Dame. I guess. <laughs> this what whole, is it? Please, ex- please. This whole explain like, further on that. I don't, don't like the idea. This whole like we don't need to be part of a conference kind of deal. You know. I understand that completely. And then we're above it all. We're just gonna. Go play a bunch of nobodies, and we'll be ranked every year, and we'll be in the the mix, and then all of a sudden we'll lose a big game. I don't know. I feel like Notre Dame fans have about got to be disappointed in that kind of style. That you would hate to just roll all these teams all year, then you finally get a big test and you lose, and you're like, oh well, mm, unfortunate. I don't know. It starts to feel bad. I would think. And so I think I know where you're going with your prediction. Yeah, I mean, I think Ohio State – well, on paper even, I think Ohio State's just a better team. I, I think Ohio State could be the best team in the country this year. Like, I think they are that good. Their defense, we need to see some things from them. But we know – Their offense is the best unit in yeah, the country. their offense is insane. Um, so, I think, especially like a week one kind of matchup, I think Notre Dame's going to need to get rolling a little bit first. Um, because, I mean, Ohio State, you can they can beat you – Anyway, they can run the ball. They can throw the ball. It doesn't matter. I don't know. I just don't see how Notre Dame wins it. That That's my opinion. Do they win by 20-plus, Ohio State? Um, Or do you just think they win by double digits? Yeah, I think it's more double digits. I don't know if 20. 20 is kind of like that magic number. I don't – that feels like a lot, but I could see it too. Like, I could see Ohio State running – I don't know. Yeah, I would say at least double digits. I think at least two touchdowns, probably. Three might be pushing it. Because I do think Notre Dame can at least hang for a little bit. Um, But I think they're going to get worn out by the end of the game. Listen, here's my thing with Notre Dame. New head coach. Mm -hmm. New young quarterback, redshirt freshman Tyler Buckner, who was a five-star guy, but is unproven. Kyron Williams is gone. New running backs. Your top receiver, Avery Davis, tore his ACL in camp. New receivers. Some played last year, mostly unproven. You got Michael Mayer, top one or two tight end in the country. You got him. So you got a bit of a safety blanket. O-line should be good. No real standout names on defense, in my opinion, besides Brandon Joseph, who transferred in from Northwestern and has kind of taken the place of Kyle Hamilton. But after all of that, how do you stand up to Ohio State <laughs> with all of that? Mm-hmm. Brand new, almost everything, losing major pieces. None of the replacements seem to be incredible. Tyler Buckner has to be like a Heisman candidate. Yeah. Off the bat for them to be have a chance to win this game. Or Marcus Freeman has to just go deep into a bag that we haven't seen in a coaching debut, mm-hmm. which I just don't see. I think this is – Ohio State is up by at least like 28 to like 14 at halftime. I think Notre Dame could score over 20 just because it's a new defensive coordinator and they're figuring out who their standouts are on defense. 
but this could be like 52 like to 24. Mm. I think it's a good chance it ends up being that. Like by by the by midway through the third quarter, it's pretty much like over over. Yeah, yeah. like it's it's forty five twenty, and Notre Dame's offense is searching for answers. Like it's it's going to be something like that. Yeah, they're going to Un- want like I, unless Notre Dame just has a surprise and a bunch of breakout offensive players. But yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I expect. They're waiting for uh, NFL Sunday Night Football. That's what they're going to be wanting at that point. Instead of that. That's on a Saturday, right? Saturday night college football. Yeah, I I don't know. I just think Ohio State's going to be so good. Um, you mentioned the Oregon-Georgia uh, game. That's one of the other big ones besides uh, Cincinnati-Arkansas. It's pretty interesting. What do you think about uh, Georgia-Oregon that's catching your eye? Oregon and Dan Lanning, they haven't – Announced a starting quarterback, but I think everybody pretty much knows Bo Nix. They they asked um, – some names always slip me every week. George's head coach. They asked him last week about the quarterback situation with with Oregon, and he pretty much said we know who it's going to be. So there's not going to be much of a surprise with Georgia. They're replacing almost all of their top defensive draft picks, but they're reloading at almost every position. Mm-hmm. I don't expect this to be another like almost all time great defense, but they're going to be at the top of the country, like top ten, yeah, pretty much again. Stetson Bennett is back. You got your running backs. You got returning receivers. I I I don't see how Oregon this it could be competitive in the first half maybe, but I I just don't see a way Oregon wins the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know either. I mean, maybe Oregon can, you know, pull off something crazy like they did last year with against Ohio State. Um, but I think Georgia is a different beast. Absolutely. Uh, they're, co- I mean, they're coming off a national championship, so you know, they're just one of the best defenses out there. Their offense is steady. Uh, I wouldn't say that their offense like does anything crazy. Um, but they also don't make a ton of mistakes necessarily. And even though they lost a lot of guys from last year, they pretty much reloaded. It's just how these big teams work. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm more interested in that game of just seeing what Oregon does. Yes, I, I think Oregon is talented enough to hang for a half. Mm-hmm. I think at halftime this could be like a 17, like 10, or 17, 14 thing. And – People are blowing up all over Twitter like, Oregon, they're, this could be a national championship team. Just complete overreactions. Yeah. And then Georgia just separates in the second half, and they end up winning like 35 to 17 or something. But just stopping Brock Bowers alone, I don't know how any team in the country does it. Mm-hmm. And Oregon has some of the most talented linebackers in the country, and they have talented defensive backs. Brock Bowers is just – he's a guy that almost could have like gone into the NFL draft last year. Yeah, he had 13 receiving. T- he was the, their leading receiver as a freshman tight end in the SEC last year, and by the end of the season, nobody in the country could stop him. Alabama, nobody. So he's he's too much of a problem. They're going to be balanced, and their defense is going to make it a. They're going to make it hell for Bo Nix. <laughs> yeah, don't even understate it. They're they're going to make it really hard for Bo Nix to get comfortable. Yeah, and he can make magic scrambling around doing Johnny Manziel type stuff, but that's not consistent enough to beat Georgia. Right. So, yeah, I, I expect something like 3517 mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Um, any other big games or any games that you're kind of looking out for? So, you mentioned Cincinnati, Arkansas. I'm really looking forward to this one because I mentioned during the SEC preview, they're probably my favorite team in the SEC. Mm-hmm. I love what Sam Pittman has done. I love his, like his personality and the, his style of coaching. I'm a big fan of K.J. Jefferson. I love the fact that they brought in Jaden Hazelwood from from Arkansas from Oklahoma after Traylon Burks got drafted. Uh, they brought in Drew Sanders from Alabama, five star defensive end linebacker. He's getting extreme hype, like All American hype. I think this could be a slight rude awakening for Cincinnati in this first week because I don't. Th- I think it's impossible to replicate what they did last year. Mm-hmm. With Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant, 
and Desmond Ritter and all of those guys. I don't think they should have. I mean, their their preseason ranking reflects that it's more reasonable. They're ranked 23rd in preseason. I think this will show that they'll most likely be more of like an eight nine win team. Because mm-hmm. I think I think by the end of the first half, it'll be clear that Arkansas is just they're too physical, and the talent difference is big. No, Cincinnati's still very talented, and their recruiting classes are getting better. But on their depth chart that they put out, they still have or placed for their quarterbacks. And it's down to <clears throat> Ben Bryant and Evan Prater. Evan Prater was a highly recruited kid out of Indiana, I believe, Indiana or Ohio, four-star kid, dual threat. Ben Bryant was at Cincinnati, left to go to Eastern Michigan and transfer back to Cincinnati. He's more of a pocket passer. So I'd assume you go with Evan Prater for the more athletic advantage. I don't think a pocket passer is getting it done against Cincinnati. I mean, against Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati really doesn't have the high-level wide receivers on the outside to, like, take advantage. Right. So – I think they could still do some some things in this game, show some signs that they're still going to be quality, but I I don't see them beating Arkansas. I really don't, yeah. especially with it being in Arkansas. Right. Yeah, I think they're still – they got some of their ranking from last year. They don't have that Desmond Ritter, uh, Alec Pierce combo anymore. Um, the other one game that I wanted to point out too uh, real quick is Utah-Florida. I was just about to bring that okay. up. I am most intrigued by this game. Yeah. Are you? The the very like out of everything you think? Yes, because this game it this is big for both sides. Utah is ranked seventh. Yeah. But there's still an air of you're going into the swamp, you're playing Florida, you're going to play the SEC. Right. And now Florida's giving the reins over to Anthony Richardson. Yeah. A lot of hype behind him. He has all the talent to be great. Mm-hmm. And if Utah gets this win, I think their playoff buzz starts. T- it begins. Yeah. If Florida wins this game, Billy Napier is already tearing it up on the recruiting trail and is putting t- together his first class. If Anthony Richardson comes out balling and he's rushing for touchdown passes and he's throwing bombs and everybody's just rising to the to the level against Utah, who honestly – they play like an SEC team. Utah is more physical than Florida will probably be to start the season. Mm-hmm. But if Florida can match with their level of elite like uh, athleticism, if Florida wins, that'll be huge. I think Utah is going to end up winning because I, I trust them as a team more than Florida at the start. Mm-hmm. I think they have a more trustworthy quarterback. But there's a chance Anthony Richardson just goes off. Right. Because he, he's that talented of an athlete and a quarterback. Even though he hasn't started much, and he's been inconsistent in his start so far, but it's, there's a chance he, he really shows out mm-hmm. and puts himself on the map in this first game. Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's one that I'm – besides maybe um, Ohio State, just because it's Ohio State, I'm curious how they're going to play this year. I'm curious what Florida's going to do. Um, like I said, I'm I'm pretty excited for Anthony Richardson. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm on line with looking at the quarterbacks that the Lions could maybe draft next season. Um, so Anthony Richardson's right up there. And I listen, like- there there are a lot of people that are starting to get angry that they didn't take uh, Malik Willis. So if Anthony Richardson has a really good season, yeah. and goes into the draft, that'd be a great consolation prize. That'd be just, pretty great. I just want to keep have people keep in mind Malik Willis it's it's still preseason it is people it's preseason his throwing still hasn't been all that great he has those flash highlight throws that make you go wow yeah people are just if you look closely people are still disappointed that he's leaving the pocket quite early just pointing it out we'll have to wait till the season if he actually plays listen if if the Titans start going downhill we might actually see Malik Willis. I, I've had to talk to a few people to tell them to tamper their expectations and hype because I, I already hear people yeah, saying he's – start him now. Yeah. And I'm like, he hasn't proven anything. He clearly has the elite talent, but let's wait. Yeah. I think – Yeah, being being in the overreaction group is more popular than 
Yeah, being the reasonable. And Tannehill has still been very solid for that Titans team. Um, any other college games that you want to point out? There's actually a game tomorrow that has a pretty good storyline. The Backyard Brawl, West Virginia at Pitt. Mm-hmm. These, these two quarterbacks going against each other are two guys that were on the same roster two years ago. Yep. JT Daniels is starting at West Virginia, and Keaton Slovis is starting for Pitt. Mm-hmm. The question for JT Daniels is can he stay healthy? Because as long as he's healthy, he's shown he can play at a high level. Right. Or at least a really good level. And in the Big 12 with West Virginia, even though they don't have the most like high, high-level talent around him there, he has enough at his disposal to put up really good numbers. On the other side, Keaton Slovis, we talked about in the ACC preview, Pat Narduzzi is trying to go back to more of a balanced attack. He doesn't want to air it out as much as they did last year, even though that won them the conference. But this is Pat Narduzzi we're talking about. Right. Keaton Slovis had a great freshman year, kind of slid off in his sophomore year, lost the job, comes to Pitt, and he wins the job. Battle of the USC quarterbacks, Mm -hmm. now on the East Coast. Really excited to see what happens between them. Yeah. If things get really fiery, if they're just I, – I assume they'll, they'll be friendly when the game starts. Right. But once it gets going, if they start going back and forth, it's, it's going to be really entertaining. Hmm. I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah. Unfortunately, I will not be able to watch that one, but – You'll get the highlights. I'll try to keep an eye on it. Yeah. The first Michigan school plays tomorrow too Central, mm-hmm. but they're probably going to lose at Oklahoma State. <laughs> yep. Playing Oklahoma yeah. State. They upset Oklahoma State on that wild Hail Mary play a few years ago, so anything is possible, I guess. Yeah. Well, well I mean, yeah. they got Lou Nichols back. He Maybe maybe he carries I, it. I, I'm happy you brought up Lou Nichols. Isn't it insane to you that you've heard literally nobody say his name? Yeah. No, I haven't heard any number one rusher. Analyst. Number one rusher in the country. He was insane last year. He was unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And nobody brings up Lou Nichols. Yep. Listen, I'm just putting it out in the air. Kareem Hunt 2.0 came out of Toledo, didn't get the hype. The Chiefs got him, and he was instantly great. Not great, but really good. Yeah. I think Lou Nichols has the same type of talent. He could go under the radar the same way. Yeah, and I think he keeps them in a lot of games because that slows the game down. Yeah, he was a he was a bell cow guy from the jump. Right. Yeah, that'll be interesting to watch, see how he gets his season started off. But, yeah, we're into week one, into the college football season. Obviously, there's not, like, a ton of crazy games yet because we're not into the the conferences, uh, but there are some good games here and there. Um, So we'll have to talk about that in two weeks, and we'll have to go over, you know, week two's games as well. Um, But I'm excited for football to start back up. And with football... Brings our NFL picks. And so we get serious. No more games. And so because <laughs> no more playing around. I'm going on honeymoon next week. We got to get our week one picks in for the NFL season. This is when the composition starts again. I'm ready to get fiery. And I'm ready. If anybody knows, Malik kind of didn't run away with it fully, but he started to kind of run away with it. At the I end put of the, the smackdown on him last season. I got. Let's not take it lightly. Okay. Well. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so uh, I ran it up. I got to get redemption this year. That's that's basically we'll see what I'm saying. Um, and NFL is usually what I'm always into. I'm playing fantasy football. Got a lot invested, and I'm just constantly watching all the teams. I love watching NFL football on Sunday. Um, so I'm ready to get into it. Um, our first Thursday night game is a banger. We got the Buffalo Bills. Playing the L.A. Rams, and I couldn't have asked for a better Thursday night game, and there probably will not. I haven't looked at the schedule. There's probably no Thursday night game that's even close to this game because um, usually Thursday night is a lot of sleepers, uh, to be honest. So getting Buffalo and the Rams week one. Who should pick first? It's fantastic. The winner from last year or the <laughs> – I'll let you choose because you're the winner. <laughs> so you can choose who picks first. You go ahead, Joey. You pick first. Okay. Well, first I, game. I want I want you to get off to a hot start. I mean, if Let's anybody get this going. if anybody knows me, I got to go with the Buffalo Bills. Okay. They're the team that I felt like didn't get robbed necessarily, but they kind of got robbed. 
they should. I feel like they were good enough to make it to the Super Bowl. I feel the same way. Um, we know you know the the overtime rule kind of hurt them. There was a lot of controversy around it, but heck of a game, heck of, heck of an end of the season for them. And they've only gotten better, to be honest. Their defense is good. Their offense is insane. Gabriel Davis is coming into his own. Um, they re-signed Isaiah McKenzie. He's going to be their slot guy, it looks like. He looks like he beat out Jamison Crowder for that starting slot job. So, like, their receiving core is incredible. Running back room is a little odd. They are still running with Devin Singletary. Supposedly, Zach Moss is still in the mix, even though they drafted James Cook. So James Cook, he showed some real signs, some flashes in the preseason. Yeah. So who knows where they're going to go with that? But I just think they're the better team. The Rams, obviously, coming off a Super Bowl victory. Yes, they're just as good. They didn't really change a whole lot. Cam Akers is now healthy. Um, they did lose OBJ, but he was hurt in like in the Super Bowl. They brought in Allen Robinson. We don't know how he's going to fit necessarily into their squad. This is the year we're going to find out, is Allen Robinson just, you know, on the downward of his career, or was it just being a Chicago Bear? Could be either one. We're going to find out. I think out. we both know what the answer was, but we'll, well see. Yeah, we'll find out for sure, yeah. though. Because with Blake Bortles, he was putting up some numbers. Yeah. And then, of course, Matthew Stafford coming back. He has had some little injury issues um, in the preseason, so we'll see. He might start off a little slow. That's kind of my thinking, too. But even so, if this was an even matchup with no injuries or anything, I'm still going with the Bills. Listen, I, I agree with you about the Buffalo Bills. I think this could be their season to win the Super Bowl. I think they're going to – they could they could go like, I don't know, like 14-3, and 15-2. and two. I think they're going to just push through the regular season, mm -hmm. just be a machine. But in week one – There's a team on the other side that won the Super Bowl last year. They did. And I don't see any hangover, at least for week one, for the L.A. Rams. Hmm. Like you said, Matt Stafford has dealt with some injury stuff. But I think I think he has some stuff to prove in this first week. Mm -hmm. People, A lot of people think Cooper Cup, that was the biggest reason why they did it last year. That He just threw it to wide open Cooper Cup all the time. OBJ came in later. Then it was even easier for him. I think he's going to show people week one. Mm. Allen Robinson going to make some big plays. Cooper Cup is going to get open all the that's That's what he does. Mm. Cooper Cup is always open. Yeah. And it seems like no matter who they play at running back, they <laughs> they get, they just figure it out. They got three or four guys. They Somebody gets hurt all the time. I hope they can f stay fully healthy this year. Yeah. But last year it was Darrell Henderson – Sony Michelle was kind of hurt nearly. It's yeah, it's tough for them at the running back position. Mm -hmm. But I think they come up with some fire, week one. I think Stafford and Josh Allen go back and forth, and I think the Rams sneak it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, I could just be giving you a leg up, but I'm just gonna go with the Rams week in this first one. The Bills did sign Von Miller. They did, but they apparently Jordan Poyer is hurt right now, yeah. so I don't even know if he's gonna. He's going to be ready for week one or not? I, don't, I think that's still up in the air, but we'll see. The Rams made a big offseason signing, too. They got Bobby Wagner. That's they true. They got that guy in the middle. Yeah. I don't expect any drop-off. Hmm. And then the big game. And then the big game? <laughs> Philadelphia versus Detroit. <laughs> Let, let's get this out the way. Give me your reasons, please. Give me the reasons of why the, the Lions are winning this game. Let's I, hear it. I, I'll be honest. I don't have the Lions winning this game. Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah. No confidence. I the Lions fan base is upset with you right now. I, I hope you know that. I think there's going to be a little bit of a hard knocks fall off. People are going to be uh, way too excited for this team, and they're not going to get it right away. Um, what I've been seeing from the defense is just terrifying to me. To be honest, <laughs> you have you have reasons. And you have your reasons. Last year, Philadelphia led the league in running. What is the Lions' biggest issue typically? Defending the run. Now, I don't think Philadelphia's going to run as much as they did last year. They had a lot of weird stuff going on. Um, they did just trade Jalen Rager away. So, I guess they're liking their receivers now. They got A.J. Brown in the offseason. That's a huge signing for them. Um, Devontae Smith is in his second season, so hopefully he can do something there. 
and Jalen Hurts is starting. He's starting to look like the guy. I don't know is if he? it's for sure, but I, I think he's he's starting to. I trust his leadership. Yeah, and I I trust his overall ability, but he has to show that consistency. Yeah, because how he ended that season last year in the playoff game was yeah. very ugly. But this year is a big year now. He's got AJ Brown. That's a big upgrade for him. So he got him and Devonte Smith so and Dallas Goddard. If those guys, he's got his weapons now, so he has no excuses for throwing. Yeah. Um, but if if he figures it out, I think they're going to be dangerous. They have made some big signings um, on defense. They got uh, C.J. Gardner Johnson from the Saints the other day, so that he's going to be paired. I think he's going to play safety for them. I think I saw, um, but just like that defensive backfield, they got uh, Darius Slay back there. Now they got Gardner Johnson. Like they're going to be pretty scary um and then of course their rookies uh nicobe dean and um oh the defensive davis jordan davis jordan davis yes. jordan davis and nicobe dean uh, well, from what i've heard and i haven't seen it so i can't be for sure is that they're starting to they're starting to figure it out and there's been some highlights of jordan davis out there Every time there's but, a clip of him just moving somebody out the way, people right. go crazy. And again, preseason, so I'm trying to keep everything intact. But I think their defense is going to be improved. I think their offense is going to be improved. And I think Detroit's going to be good too. Like Jared sounds Goff, like sounds like you're thinking the Eagles could uh, contend in the NFC East. Well, kind of sounds NFC, like it. the NFC East is pretty rough. I don't know if you've seen it. It is. <laughs> it is the NFC East for a reason. <laughs> and then Detroit on the other side. I think Jared Goff is actually going to have a really good season. Uh, I agree. He, he's looked really good so far. Um, again, it's still preseason, training camp, all that stuff. Take it with a grain of salt. But I think their offense is going to be good. I think it's going to be solid. Their offensive line, DeAndre Swift could have a big year as long as he stays healthy. But that defense, I, I'm just not ready to trust it. And it's a wait and see kind of thing. And when you're going up against a guy like Jalen Hurts who can – beat you with his legs and then you start defending against that and you got AJ Brown over the top or even Devontae Smith. I, I don't know what they're gonna do defensively. This could even this would be a game where Dallas Goddard gets like ten catches. Exactly. Because the linebackers just don't know. People forget yeah. how good Dallas Goddard is as well. He's one of the better tight ends in the league. Um and he just he takes over the middle of the field and that is where the Lions have their biggest problems. Listen. Lions fans are going to be mad at me too because yes, I'm going with Philly. I'm I'm going with Philly too. Uh, not even thinking about it. Fly Eagles, fly. Yeah. Who's who was Philly starting? Are they still starting Miles Sanders? I believe so, but it's still kind of a. It seems like they committee. started to favor Boston Scott more than him, which was weird. Yeah. I don't well, know. And then the talk again now is that they really like Kenneth Gainwell again. He was in. He's and more out. of like a gadget guy though. Yeah. So we'll see. New Orleans at Atlanta. This one's interesting. I think Atlanta, they're not going to surprise people, I guess. But I think they're going to sneak out a couple wins here and there. They got Marcus Mariota. He's got to prove himself. A lot of people are expecting Des Ritter to be the starter by like yeah. game five or six. But I think Marcus Mariota could, could hold it down for a bit. Uh, Kyle Pitts, probably going to be double teamed on every play. Um, so they got some... Some things to figure out, but I think their offense is going to be all right. They're kind of in the same boat as the Lions. I think their defense is just going to struggle, but their offense is probably going to be okay. Um, not great because they're still missing Calvin Ridley, um, but I think they can do some things, mix up some schemes, and maybe figure things out. They got Cordero Patterson. He's another year older, but it's kind of that guy, gadget guy for them. Um, but I think New Orleans is going to win this game. New Orleans is... Notably, one of the best defenses in the league almost every year. Um, they have lost some of their pieces um, recently, but they're still strong at defense. Um, it looks like Alvin Kamara is not going to be suspended. Uh, his court and trials and stuff are not moving along. And I think uh, Jameis Jam James Winston has a ton of pieces to throw to now. Michael Thomas is supposed to be healthy. Drafted Chris Olave. They signed Jarvis Landry. Plus, you got Alvin Kamara out of the backfield. He got plenty of weapons. We've seen that he can do it. I just think New Orleans is the better team, especially week one. Fun fact about the Falcons. They signed a receiver in the last few days from Ferris State. 
a guy that was a lacrosse player. Yes. And I'm glad you brought that up. Played receiver for the first time in May. Mm-hmm. And he made the team. Shouts out to Ferris State. He played quarterback at Ferris State? I believe he's, yeah, he started playing quarterback, then he played lacrosse, and then, yeah. Yep. But yeah. Jared Bernhardt, shouts out to you. Cool. I hope you have a successful season. It's a cool story. That is the most positive I have to say about the Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> the Saints are winning this game. I do like some of the Falcons' young pieces. I like Tyler Algier. Mm-hmm. He'll I'm, he'll get better throughout the season. Des Ritter, I hope he gets his chance at some point, even though, like you, I'd – I like the Marcus Mariota still gets. I a forgot chance. to bring up Drake London. Yeah, when when he's healthy, Drake London should be a weapon too. But yeah, I um they they secretly have one of the better corners in the league too. Yeah, but their defense as a whole, yeah, is a problem. It's it's just it's one diamond and a yeah, just just a bunch of nothingness. So they're most likely the worst team in the league this year. Saints go, yeah, Saints win. San Francisco at Chicago. This is kind of interesting one. The two young guns, Trey Lance versus Justin Fields. This would be a fun one to watch. Jimmy Garoppolo just recently restructured for a one year deal. He's on. Yeah. Which to me feels a little alarming. Don't you think? I saw somebody bring this up on Twitter yesterday. After all the trade. All rumors. these types of situations, you start the young guy and then the veteran is out quickly after. Yeah. It's weird that they're keeping Jimmy Garoppolo. And they're Garoppolo. bringing him back after they said. They're done with him, basically. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see kind of thing. Um, but San Francisco, San Francisco, they're one of those teams. Like Their their playoff bubble is slowly fading away very quickly. Um, and then Chicago, they're kind of a mess. They're going to have to lean on Justin Fields a lot. Um, he had a great last preseason game. Hmm. Yeah, they, sure. He got Darnell Mooney. Yep. I, I, I'm a big fan of David Montgomery. Well, when Chicago, uh, they just recently signed Alex Leatherwood, who's a two-year player. Who nobody else Who just got to sign. dropped by the Raiders after <laughs> yeah. two years. We'll get to the we'll get to the Raiders. Yeah. Because uh, that's something. Um, I just think Chicago's in shambles. I think San Francisco still has, like, their defense that they can lean on. Trey Lance just needs to make a few plays. They got Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. They always have a running game. I just think they're the better team. San Francisco. I wish we didn't have so many similar picks th- to start well, this. There's but a it's, lot of it's games. the way the schedule sets up. And yeah. there's a lot of games. There are many more games. But I, I have to agree. Yeah. I mean, Justin Fields versus that offense. Hopefully, Matt Eberflus is the name of that coach now, right? Yes. Hopefully, Matt Eberflus sets him up more than that absolute travesty of what happened last season mm-hmm. where they were just sending Justin Fields out there to die every week. Yeah. Hopefully they have a better scheme in this one, but even with a better scheme, I feel, yeah, San Francisco's defense healthy is just too overwhelming for half the teams in the league. Yeah. And like you said, they, they have so many pieces on offense that should make it pretty easy yeah. for – Jesus Christ, I'm terrible. Trey Lance in his first start. I was like, are you looking for Trey Lance? <laughs> for his second year start. Yes. Okay. Something wrong with my memory, man. Let's move on. San Pitts- Francisco. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati's just going to feast. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm going to go Pittsburgh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going Pittsburgh week one. Even if this is like one of five. Or six. I think this is a game where Mr. Bisky just comes out and just like balls out. Yeah. He's got weapons. Their their offense is not bad. Their offensive line is and bad. Even though the Bengals have done an incredible job restructuring the offensive line around Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. I think they schemed something up for to for TJ Watt and them to get at him. Okay. And Pittsburgh surprises week one. I like the bold call. Yeah. Uh, another couple of young bucks, New England at Miami. Tua got his new, new toy, Tyreek Hill. Uh, Jalen Waddle is a little bit hurt. Um, I think his week one status is up in the air at the moment. Um, and then New England, you know, Mac Jones had a solid rookie season and he's got a couple new pieces. They got Devonte Parker there now. Um, there are four wide receivers that are listed as, uh, out or questionable. 
Hmm. For Miami? For New England. Oh, for New England. <laughs> wow. So, Ty, Tyquan Thornton, we knew he was out. Yes. But Jacoby Myers, Ty Montgomery, and Christian Wilkerson. Christian Wilkerson is on injured reserve. Hmm. Ty Montgomery is kind questionable. of Ty Montgomery's kind of a gadget yeah. running back kind of guy. Hmm. Interesting. I was going to go with Miami anyway, just to let you know. Uh, I think Miami, they got a lot to prove. And their defense is always kind of under the radar. And this is a big year for Tua. He's got to show out this year. Otherwise, it would be a lot of question marks. But I think they're going to try to mix up their offense a lot. They're going to use Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Hill with a lot of weird little slant crossing routes, things like that. Chase Edmonds, Chase Edmonds can uh, catch the ball out of the backfield. Raheem Mostert, super quick. Uh, I think they're those two guys are going to kind of be in tam, tandem quite a bit. Um and I, I don't know. I just can't trust this new New England team, even though like they proved everybody wrong last year. I, I just can't believe it. I don't know. I think in this first game for the Dolphins, I think Mike McDaniel might get a little too excited. I think he's going to call some unnecessary extra plays that don't need to happen. Probably some like double reverses and some tricks that don't need to happen. Yeah. I don't think he's instantly just going to come in and out coach Bill Belichick. I think Mac Jones is going to play his game, be accurate, maybe hit a few deep throws when he needs to, but just play accurate, use those four or five different running backs that they play. James White is finally gone. It's crazy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Decided to retire from the NFL. Yeah, he had a really good career, underrated. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think they just stick to their regular New England game plan. I don't think they fall for any of the extra craziness that Mike McDaniel draws up. Mm-hmm. And I think it could be a tight game to the end, but I think New England pulls it out. Okay. And, yeah, back to the drawing board for the Dolphins, but they could still have a quality season. Gotcha. Baltimore at the Jets. Is this a Joe Flacco revenge game? Not Please even I. Please not, do it. <laughs> not even I think that. Baltimore is just a better mark, team. Mark me down for Baltimore. This, is this, this Baltimore is just the, the better team. Is this another Mike White renaissance? Is this what this is? <laughs> Jacksonville <laughs> at Washington, the Commanders. I, I'm interested on who you pick here. Let, let me, can I go first, please? Go for it. Listen. I think this is going to be the first sign of stability for the Jaguars. Hmm. They have a real NFL coach, Joey. Seems like it. <laughs> They, they they have a guy that was that won a Super Bowl mm-hmm. and and got ran out of town eventually. But they have a guy that won a Super Bowl and knows how to coach consistent good football in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And I think that means something for Trevor Lawrence. I think that means something for the talent they have on that offense, even though they overspent on some guys. I think their running back core is going to surprise some people. And I think they have some talent on defense that could also surprise some people. I'm going to go with the Jags week one. Hmm. Didn't sway my position at all. Going with the Commanders. Okay. I think they also are kind of in the same boat. I think they, they've got some some things to prove. Is Antonio Gibson going to hold on to the ball, Joey? Ah, that's the one problem. <laughs> so, uh, disappointingly, over the weekend, Brian Robinson was shot in – Supposedly Washington D.C. Yeah. Um, completely stable com- condition. Looks like he's going to be just fine. Yeah. It's pretty awesome uh, that he's coming out of it because he was one of the preseason highlights. Um, yeah, I saw a video the- of him going into the facility with crutches. Yeah, like surprising everybody that he was back. So looks like he is going to return. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they put him on the PUP list yet, um, which would put him off until uh, week four. But we won't see him for a couple weeks probably, but hopefully he'll be a full recovery and they'll have a really good running game. Yeah. So it looks like Antonio Gibson's going to be back on the reins. We're not 100% sure because he was working with special teams a lot. That's the only question mark. They got J.D. McKissick too, so yeah. he's, he's going to do what he does. But I'm curious to see what Carson Wentz does with Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson. Like, Terry McLaurin has his best quarterback. Sad that it's Carson Wentz, but... It is an upgrade, and I do think like Carson Wentz can excel in the deep ball. So maybe they can figure something out. I think their defense is still right up there with the top defenses. They disappointed last year. I understand that. 
but I, th- I think they got a lot to prove. And I don't think Jacksonville's quite ready yet. I'm going to give you an over-under. I want your opinion on this. Six games. Taylor Heineke will be starting again. <laughs> Under, over. Over. I, I think Carson Wentz is passable. You think you think he's at a point where he's just going to play good, reliable football? I think so. Or do you so. think he's going to become I think he's still going to make again. mistakes, but I don't think like it's going to be so bad that Taylor Heineke is going to have to start up. Like, come back in. I'm ready for Sam Howell to get in there eventually. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah. Honestly. I think that yeah. might be even – Let's get to the future. Possibly the more likely scenario. Cleveland at Carolina. Is there even – do we even need to talk about this? Really? <sighs> do we need to? No, but I, I have, like, this weird feeling that Cleveland could do this. Cleveland, they have the better overall, like, veteran roster. Mm-hmm. But Baker Mayfield said he's going to F them up. Listen. So ever since he said that, I've honestly been doubting it a little bit, but it's worked for him a lot. Mm-hmm. And this, I, I think Baker is going to come out really just, yeah. Yeah. I think he, he might just play a clean, fantastic game. I'm also going with Carolina. I think when you're eh, not, not guaranteed, I guess, but you're almost guaranteed to get a whole healthy McCaffrey for a game. That's pretty dangerous. Yeah. Um, and Cleveland's defense is going to have to do a lot because their offense probably won't be on the field all too often. So, How many carries do they give uh, Nick Chubb this first game? Is it well? Is it over 30? It'll be no because they still got Kareem Hunt. I didn't know what was up with him since he requested a trade. Yeah, he's. I think he's back to just playing. I forgot they, they have the rookie out of Cincinnati too. I forgot about that. Yeah. They have a few options. But I, I think – Chubb will still get over 20 carries. Kareem Hunt might get 10 to 15 even. They might really just try to run the ball. Uh, okay. Um, what did I What did I write here? <laughs> About what? Oh, it's Indianapolis. I was like. You confused yourself. <laughs> well, because my N I made so small it looked like Notre Dame for a second. <laughs> uh, Indy playing Houston at Houston. I think Indy's just too good. I think Indy is another team that they're like on the cusp of losing their playoff bubble, so I think they're going to play really well. I'm curious to see how Houston plays. Heard a lot of good things out of uh, Nico Collins and Damian Pierce, so might be enjoyable to see them, but I think the Colts are just too good right now. I'm going to ask for a request that I don't think I have before. Okay. I would like to switch my surprise picks. I would like to pick... Switch around the Steelers game and make this my surprise pick of the week. Okay. So you want to take Houston yes. over the Colts instead of Pittsburgh over Cincinnati. Yes. Your funeral. <laughs> it could be. But I, I listen, I'm taking a chance on Lovey Smith. And that's not. No, that's, that's tough. That's, that's tough. Uh but there's an energy with these young dudes in Houston. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're going to come out and just I, – I feel like they're going to play – at least try to play the game of their lives in this first week because nobody thinks they can do it. Well, how does their defense stop Mike, uh, Michael Pittman? It's a hell of a question, Joey. How does their defense stop Jonathan Taylor? That's a hell of a question, Joey. Naheem Hines? Listen. Alec Pierce? Their receiving core. Paris Campbell? Their receiving core. I, I, I only somewhat trust Paris Campbell. True. Michael Pittman still has to prove that he's that, like, real number one guy. Yeah. The rookie out of Cincinnati, Alec Pierce, he's getting a lot of buzz. People are saying he's the real deal. Mm-hmm. But he has to prove it on game day. Jonathan Taylor, we, we we know what that is. Yeah. If you can get pressure on Matt Ryan, he's not running anywhere. He's got one of his best offensive lines he's probably ever had. He does. <laughs> so, But if you can force him to make a few mistakes, surprise, surprise. Okay. I mean, I'll take the bold call. I like Listen, it. it could be a low-scoring game. Jonathan Taylor could still have well over 100 yards. This could end like 20 to 17. I'm just going to go with the surprise pick. Fair Texans enough. Texans over Colts, week one. New York Giants at the Titans. Ooh, Tennessee, they're, they're on their last leg. They are. Uh, they got uh, Robert Woods to replace A.J. Brown. It's a little bit of a downgrade. Healthy Robert Woods is a really good receiver. Yeah. 
He's a good but, guy uh, on the team to have. He's a good blocker. He does a lot of things. Uh, it's a lot on Traylon Burks' shoulders. Drafted so much. Traylon Burks. Yeah. Derrick Henry is healthy. Ryan Tannehill. Their offensive line is a little down. Um, they're kind of that in the middle team. And then you got the Giants. And then you have the Giants. <laughs> Saquon Barkley is healthy. Positives. Let's keep it going. Uh, 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 They had some good Listen, draft picks. What is wrong with Kenny Galladay? Did you see the clips of him in preseason? It's rough. There are people that were literally there are people that are defending him, saying it's just preseason. He shouldn't be trying. Sure, <laughs> sure. He literally wouldn't block for one of his players on a run play against mm-hmm. the Jets. He just stood back and let. What 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 happened to him? I don't know. It's rough. Now their offensive line is better. They're because they're coaching. Should be much better. They've had some improvements on defense. Saquon Barkley is healthy for now. I think they could surprise some teams here and there. Here and there. And I really want to pick them here. I just realized you haven't made a surprise pick of the week. Not not really. You don't have to if you don't want to. My only, it's week one. My main surprise is Miami, which isn't. Crazy. It's not a big, that's, that's not a big surprise. I'm going to go with the Giants. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. My, my only risk. fear is, of course, the Derrick Henry factor. Like, he could just run for 200 yards on this team. Hey, Saquon could pop up again like his rookie year and just he show could. people he's back. So, I'm going to hope, you know, something happens. I'm going Titans. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. I'm going the Tennessee Titans. Throw in some Malik Willis packages, please. Hmm. We got please. Green Bay at Minnesota. This is an interesting game. Mm-hmm. It really is. Minnesota could take over the NFC North this year. Could they? They got some some new coaching. They got some new offensive schemes. A lot of people think they're gonna they're gonna run. I mean, Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, KJ Osborne just traded for Jalen Rager. Dalvin Cook is healthy. Offense is pretty dangerous. Uh, defense is kind of it's all right. It's nothing crazy, but it's not bad. Yeah, they've been replacing the old guys mm-hmm. that made them a dominant defense from like four or five years ago. Yeah. And then there's Green Bay. They got Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, you know, just a couple MVPs, no big deal. Uh, but he doesn't have Devontae Adams. He does have his dynamic duo of running backs of A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. Those guys are going to be good. Who's the, who's the go-to receiver? <sighs> Alan Lazard. It might be Romeo Dubs. It might be, but Ooh, I would love because I he was one of my sleepers in the draft. But yeah, it might also end up being Christian Watson. He's been banged up in the preseason, so we haven't gotten to see a lot of him. But other than that, their receivers are Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, and Sammy Watkins. Interesting, to say the least. And the the kid they drafted out of Clemson last year, who they're not doing much with. It seems like I don't even remember who it is. <laughs> anyway, so Green Bay is there. I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers. Their defense is always pretty solid. But I'm going with Minnesota. I'm buying into the hype behind the Vikings. I think I think they're finding gonna find their groove this year. And the Justin Jefferson's name is Amari Rodgers. Oh, you're yes. right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who you got? <sighs> I think there's a good chance Green Bay could just win it again. Cause I, I still think I think their defense is gonna be the best in the division. Hmm. Could still end up being one of the better defenses in the league because they who do they lose? Did they lose anybody from the defense? Um, Any anybody major? I don't think so. Not that I can, not that I can yeah. think of off the top of my head. Unless, as long as you have Aaron Rodgers, unless Jair Alexander went somewhere. I think he did. He resign. I can't remember. Yep, he's for the, he's still on the Packers. Yep, I'm going Green Bay. Okay. I think Aaron Rodgers tries to come out and make a point. First of all, that he's better than Kirk Cousins, which isn't a doubt, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) there are people saying the Vikings could win this division and he's going to try to let them know that's, no, I'm shutting you up right now. And, yeah, I'm I'm really interested in seeing who his standout targets are. Who are the guys he targets the most? I assume Alan Lazard will be one. Mm Mm-hmm. I assume they'll take some deep shots to Romeo Dubs because that's one of his specialties. He could go back to throwing to Bob Tunyon. He's healthy. 
That's also an option. But, yeah, the run game, I'm sure it'll be more balanced than it's been in a while. Yeah. yeah right. I'm going Green Bay. Kansas City at Arizona. Man, Arizona is a weird team. They always get off to these hot starts, and then they look bad towards the end of the season. Uh, Kansas City going through probably one of their, quote-unquote, toughest times, losing Tyreek Hill. Um, They kind of not really reloaded because you can't really replace a guy like Tyreek Hill. They retooled. But they got Juju Smith-Schuster. They got Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Still they got draft- McCall Hardman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they drafted Sky Moore. All those guys do something a little different for the most part. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster is still only 25, 26 years old. Can he revitalize his career? Do they still have Demarcus Robinson or Dickie Gilson? No, he's on the Ravens, actually. Okay. Uh, I forgot about that trade. He either. was in – well, he was in Vegas early on in the offseason. They cut him, and then the Ravens picked him up. And then I think in his first, like, preseason game with the Ravens, he had, like, four catches for 100 and some yards and, like, two touchdowns. Um, But, no. So, Kansas City's got a lot of things to figure out, especially on offense. Um, The running back room is still weird. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, he's been kind of banged up. Can he stay healthy? Will he be better? Because Isaiah Pacheco is knocking on the door, apparently. Yeah. And they got Ronald Jones, too, which we'll see what they do with him. Yeah. And then there's Arizona. Uh, they're not going to have uh, DeAndre Hopkins for the first eight weeks, something like that. Uh, they did sign Marquise Brown in the offseason. They still got Rondell Moore. I think they still got A.J. Green. Um, James Conner in the backfield. They're going to be solid, but will they step up this year? I don't know. I'm, not, they've they've had potential for about three years now. Yeah. And then Kansas City in the preseason, we've seen Patrick Mahomes actually quite a bit, and he's been just destroying everyone. Yeah. I think I'll just go with Kansas City here. I'll go with the easy choice. I don't know. Because Arizona always starts hot. I think they do let out him and Kyler Murray. And Kyler was making a point in the preseason by standing on the sidelines with the headset and coaching, quote unquote, yeah. showing he knew the playbook and he knew the system. Mm-hmm. I think he comes out and the offense has some explosion. I think him and Marquise Brown cut on a few deep throws. Maybe AJ Brown, AJ Green catches a touchdown on like a fade route in the, in the red zone. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go Arizona week one. Okay. I'm still writing Oakland. Las Vegas versus the Chargers. Uh, Chargers just signed Sony Michelle as a backup running back. Actually, probably a pretty good move. They have Austin Eckler, Isaiah Spiller. Now they got Sony Michelle just in case. Um, Can I go first? Go for it. I really want the, I I'm, I'm not a Derek Carr fan, exactly. Mm-hmm. But he's a guy I've always defended. I've always liked Derek Carr. I love the Devontae Adams signing. We'll see what happens with the coach. <laughs> mm-hmm. He says he's learned from his past. I'm going Chargers week one. I'm go- I got to go Chargers. I think Justin Herbert, he could be like top five in MVP voting this year. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to put up numbers, and this is the start of it. I'm going to go with the Raiders. I, like I think it. this could be Derek Carr's year. I think he's. I would gonna, like it if it was. <laughs> I think he's going to make some noise this year, um, just because I think they're going to they're going to change their offensive schemes. They're not going to run it as much. Josh Jacobs has been okay. He's been serviceable. They seem to like Zamir White. They let go of Kenyon Drake, but I think they're going to try to air it out a lot more. I mean, they got Devonte Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro. Like, that's a good receiving core right there, um, and I think Derek Carr has just been. I don't know. Like, he's always a low touchdown guy, which is weird because he, he's always up there in yards, but just low touchdowns. I think Devontae Adams is going to open things up for him. And even if it's not Devontae Adams that he's getting it to, it's going to definitely open up Hunter Renfro. And we saw him down the stretch last year play really good. Chargers are going to be one crazy good team, I think, this year too. But As long I, as they're healthy on defense, that's always the thing. But I think there's a chance that a week one, Chargers might – be getting up to speed, maybe. I think the Raiders might come out slinging. 
and they might be able to catch somebody off guard. Tampa Bay at Dallas. Tom Brady. Are either back. of us really picking the Cowboys? No. Tom Brady's back. How, how do you how do you feel about the plastic surgery conversations that have been going on about his face? To be honest, I thought the exact same thing. <laughs> it is, it's looking a little. Uh, Tom Brady. How do you might describe be, it? He might be going. Ken Dollish. Him. He might be going through some things. He's, um, he said he's he said I'm 45. Yeah. I'm dealing with stuff. Yeah, it seems I apparent. Kind of believe him. So take that what you will. But he's back, like you said. Tom Brady on a football field. I got no worries. Uh, Chris Godwin seems like he's progressing. Still don't know for sure if he's going to play Week One. Um, if he is, he might be limited. But it doesn't matter. They got Mike Evans. They got Julio Jones even that they signed. I'm curious to Chris see what Godwin isn't anywhere on the injury report list. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Russell Gage, Leonard Fournette's back. I mean, Gronk's gone, but Cameron Brait has looked good. Their defense is one of the best. Dallas, mm, they got CeeDee Lamb. They is, got, it, is it time to make fun of the Cowboys? Should, should we just point out their flaws? They got a lot of flaws. Your most positive and exciting thing from preseason is a USFL returner. That is basically a part-time receiver. Mm -hmm. The receiver you drafted out of South Alabama looks like he has a lot of time to keep developing, but you need him to step up right now. Mm -hmm. He's probably not ready. Noah Brown hasn't proven much of anything in his career. He might be your number two receiver. Mm -hmm. Tyron Smith is out. Your corner, your top corner is going to be getting burnt in all preseason. Do you want to add on? Zeke Elliott's a year older. Yes. Um, the lone bright spot is Micah Parsons. He was ranked 12th out of the top 100 NFL players. Is Leighton Van Der Esch back? <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter? Is this, is, <laughs> is this his year? <laughs> yeah. Dallas is... America's team. <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> Absolutely pathetic. I guess. Ah, uh, gotta love the cowgirls. Gotta love them. <laughs> and then, and then on Monday night we get a quote unquote banger. Denver, <laughs> quote unquote banger. Denver at Seattle. <laughs> Russell Wilson playing his old team at his old. The stadium. sad part is Seattle fans aren't gonna boo Russ. No, <laughs> they're not gonna boo him. No, they're gonna be crying that he's on the <laughs> other side. And Who do you think is gonna get louder of like applause, Russ or their starting quarterback? Russ. Well, they're starting Geno Smith. <laughs> Geno's going he's going to feel so terrible during yeah. that game. I feel bad for Geno, man. Yeah. Wow. Hey, he gets to start. It is what it uh, is. Hopefully he understands, you know. I'm sure he's a mature man, hopefully, at this point. But how could you – you can't pick Seattle. There's just no way. They have so many problems. The odds of Geno Smith outdueling Russell Wilson. What – I, I I can't see it. I can't no. imagine it in my brain. I no, because, I mean, basically, Russell Wilson leaves Seattle, who has DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, a really good wide receiver pair. And he goes to a very similar place with Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. Now, they are probably slight downgrades in each side, but now they they have Russell Wilson throwing to them. DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett have Geno Smith throwing to them now he played okay with them last year yeah, this is, they they have some chemistry but but also denver's got melvin gordon and javante williams they can run the ball they can go either way yeah seattle ken walker is hurt he's not progressing very well i'd be much more interested if um the quarterback denver traded drew lock i'd be much more interested if he was starting because yeah. then we could see like four picks and like two touchdowns from drew lock <laughs> Just going, it's just a bunch of insanity. I mean, DK, DK Metcalf would get the looks that he wants if Drew Locke was playing. He, he's still going to get it from Gino. There's a more accurate chance with Gino. Mm. But with Drew, it's it's a 50-50. Yeah. That'd be exciting. So, we'll see. Denver's got a good defense. Seattle does not. They've lost. Like They don't have the Legion of Boom anymore. I don't even know if the 12th man's going to really show up. They might be cheering for Russell Wilson all game. This will be like, this will be his first retirement ceremony. Mm -hmm. There will be so many Russell Wilson jerseys. 
Oh man. Yeah. Uh yeah. Poor Seattle. It's a poor They had their run though. Forget them. <laughs> it's a poor Monday night game. It'll be a Russell Wilson showcase to show what his new offense is gonna look like. Why did why is Pete Carroll still their coach? Why are they just keeping him like I mean, he has a second run in them? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know like that they need to fire him, but I also can see like it's a new why age. do they need You're him? starting over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. All righty. That's been our NFL picks week one. We'll have to see what happens with those um, in two weeks. We'll check on them. Like I said, uh, we're off next week. Um, we'll review the college football season two games in. When we get back, um, NFL season starting. So we get to actually talk about football games that have happened in two weeks. I'm excited for it. I'm also excited to go on vacation. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. We're both taking trips. We're going on a trip to Atlanta for a wedding. We will compare trip notes when we come back. Who had more fun? Tune in.